Hello, today we are gonna make something that I have wanted to make for so long and I'm so excited. It is this stacked pearl choker necklace with red beads falling from it to mimic blood drops and it's also painted like blood. It was originally done by John Galliano for Christian Dior in I believe 2006 for their spring collection but it's been recreated so many times by so many people and I want to give it a shot because it's right up my alley. I'm gonna do my best to film this video like a tutorial and go through everything clearly. Let's just jump into materials. I will list everything that I am planning on using down below as well. So I'm going to use these things called multi-strand connectors. It is essentially just a metal bar and one side has one ring on it and the other side has five rings on it or at least mine do. The original necklace has four strands of pearls but I'm going to go ahead and do five because that's how many rings my connectors have. I kind of like the idea of more strands anyways. So for my pearls, I am going to use these 8mm glass faux pearl beads. There are four strands that are each 7 inches long, and I have three of these, so I think I should have enough. I will be using beading thread and a beading needle. You could probably get away with just using polyester sewing thread, but I like using these beading needles because they're flexible and that comes in handy a lot of the time. You are going to need some jump rings and some kind of closure. I'm gonna use a lobster clasp. Oh, you're gonna need pliers, I forgot about pliers. I'm gonna use a pair of flat nose pliers and a pair of round nose pliers, because that's what I have. For the red beads for the blood drops, I'm gonna use three different sizes. I'm using some seed beads and then two different sizes of other beads that I found at the craft store that I liked. I think three sizes looks really nice because it's nice to sort of have variation. And also I kind of like that they're like different types of beads. I just think it makes it more interesting. You're gonna need some kind of clear string. I am gonna try to use this monofilament illusion cord that I got at the craft store. I've never used this before, but I wanted to try something that doesn't stretch. And then lastly, for the blood that's painted onto the necklace, I am just gonna end up using nail polish. I thought it would be a better option compared to like acrylic paint because at least nail polish will have a little bit of shine and you won't have to worry about varnish. I tried to find a red nail polish that matched my beads a little bit more and had more of an orange undertone but I'm just gonna hope that it looks good. I'm not too stressed if the blood on the necklace doesn't match the beads so so yeah I think that's it. We are going to start by making the actual necklace first and then we will do the blood drops later so let's get started. So first we are going to thread our needle. I'm just going to take a really long piece of this, maybe about three to four feet. It's more than I need, but that's just so that we have extra. And now I'm just going to go ahead and thread my needle like you would any sewing needle. Line the ends of the thread up and then about six, seven inches down, I'm going to tie a couple knots or one big knot really. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start beading as normal and stop and check every now and then to see if it is long enough to fit around my neck. Alright, so I've decided that 43 beads is enough we are going to go ahead and start adding them to the connectors. So the plan is to attach one end of the beads to one ring on one connector and the other end to another ring on the other connector. So let's go ahead and do that. We are gonna start with the side that the needle is still attached to. We don't have to put a knot on this end. We're just gonna go ahead and continue to use our needle. Okay, I've just laid a scarf down so that hopefully you can see this a little bit better. With the beads still attached to the needle, we are going to start with one of these rings. I'm just going to start with this top one here. And we are literally just going to thread the needle through the ring and pull it as close as we can. You don't want to pull too tight because it will push the beads past this knot on the other side. But you do want to try to pull it right up against there. Don't worry too much about if there ends up being a little gap here um, because you can correct it when you're doing the other side. So I'm just going to thread my needle around and around this ring a few times. You do have to hold it a little bit. It might be a little finicky, but it should be okay. Okay. 
and now we are going to knot it. I am going to take my needle and go to the left of that ring and form a loop like this and then I'm going to put my needle in that loop a couple times and pull tight and it's, the knot is going to be underneath the ring and I'm going to do that twice. And there we go, it's attached. Now with my needle still attached, I'm just gonna weave the rest of that thread through a few of these beads. And there we go. So you're just gonna do the same thing to the other side with the matching ring on the other connector. So my thread's a little short and I'm having to bend my needle, but that's why these bendy needles are really good because sometimes that happens. And there we go, one strand attached. I have gone ahead and made all of my strands. So I am just going to go ahead and off camera attach the rest of the beads and then I will be back. Here it is. I have a temporary closure on here right now because I can't find the one I'm going to use, but we're gonna do the closure at the end, so I'll figure that out later. Yeah, it's really cute. Next, we are going to make the red bead blood drops, and then we are gonna attach them to the necklace, and then we will paint, and then closure. All right, so to make the bleeding strands, we are going to use the clear cord. I've cut about a maybe 20 inch piece here. You just want it to be pretty long, much longer than what it is going to end up being. I'm gonna take my beading needle and thread it with the cord and then tie a knot like that. And then I'm going to take one of my seed beads. So I have my seed beads here, the smallest bead, my medium sized bead, and my large beads over here. I'm going to take the smaller bead and with the other end of the thread, oh, please ignore, ignore my broken nail. Um, with the other end of the thread or the cord and the seed bead, I'm going to put that on there and take about two inches of length and tie a couple knots around this bead. So every strand is going to start like this. This is going to be the bottom. I have made a couple over here to show you. As you can see, one is a little bit longer and the beads are just kind of sporadic. I am going to make four strands and I'm going to try to make each of them unique. I will just take, I guess, a medium bead and I'm going to pull this all the way down to the bottom and have it sit on top of the smaller bead in order to have them stay in place. You are gonna take your needle and thread it through the bottom hole. And then before pushing it all the way through, you're gonna take the cord that's coming out of the top of the bead and wrap it around that needle two or three times. And then pull it through. Try to keep everything tight and in place. And there you go. Don't worry about the tail. We're gonna tuck that in at the end. But yeah, you're just gonna randomly place beads and space them out however you want. So next, let's do a large bead. And let's have this one spaced away a little bit. So I'm gonna try to hold this in place close to where I want it to be. So I'll have a little bit of space in between. Put my needle through the bottom of the bead. Take the cord from the top and wrap it around and then pull it through. And there we go. It should be pretty stuck in place. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Here are my finished 
I'm almost finished strands. I'm gonna take these tails and finish them. I'm gonna take this tail, thread it through my needle, and then weave it through that next bead. Now before I trim that tail, I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of super glue on there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that tail off. I've laid out my finished beaded blood drops here in the order that I want them to hang on the necklace. These two are the shortest and I'm gonna put them on the outside. So if you imagine splitting the necklace in half, and then splitting it in half again. This is the section that I want to put the blood in. Technically, this is the front of the necklace because the connectors have a right side and a wrong side. So this will be on my left, which is where I want it. What I'm gonna do is just take each string and tie it on to this first string of pearls here, just right in between the beads and then weave the tail in and cut them when it's time to paint the blood. This is really gonna end up sealing up quite a lot of these beads and sticking them together. So I'm gonna kinda use it like glue to sort of seal the knots. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm literally just gonna tie this right on. I'm just gonna make it a couple knots to make sure that it's really tied on there. I'm going to just weave the rest of this tail in. I'm going to uh, weave it to the right. And there we go. There's one. I'm just going to do the rest. I'll probably evenly space them out and I'll be right back. last step, well technically the last step, is going to be adding the closure because I cannot find the one I'm going to use at the moment so I'll figure that out later and put it on at the end but technically the last step is painting the blood. So I'm going to get something to put down. I'm just going to separate these beads as best as I can and paint kind of randomly. I think what I'm gonna do is paint it, pick it up, and then kind of shake it to get some more tiny little splatter spots. But let's just go ahead and start painting it. So I'm using this nail polish that I showed before by Essie. Also, I'm probably gonna have to paint this a couple times just to make sure that I get all the different sides because these are gonna rotate as I wear it. So I'm gonna have to go over this a couple times. So I'm just gonna literally just dab and try to do it kind of randomly. I did my first little round of paint. I'm actually gonna pick this up and shake it around and hope that it gives me some more tiny little splatters. I'm gonna hold these beads out of the way. I don't know if you can see, but it just makes it a little bit more messy, a little bit more splattery. So I'm gonna do that a few times and then we will come back and put the closure on. And here is the finished necklace. All that's left to do is put the clasp on. So for that, I am just gonna use a lobster clasp with a small jump ring and a large jump ring on the other side. You can use whatever clasp you want. I wish I had something else to use, but for now this is what I have, so it's what I'm gonna use. I got a little bit of nail polish on the clear cord, so I'm gonna use some nail polish remover to get that off, but other than that, it is all done. Let's go ahead and try it on. 
you are very zoomed in. Quick note, before we get to the finished necklace, I filmed an entire outro for this video and then upon editing, realized that I didn't really like the way that the necklace looked, specifically the red beads that were hanging because it's supposed to give spilling blood and it was, as much as I liked the daintiness of it and how it looked spread out, it just wasn't giving that. So I made the decision to redo the beads off camera and I just wanted to let you know before we go ahead and look at it and it suddenly looks different. Um, I basically just clipped off the beads and restrung them to be a little bit more full and then when I reattached them to the necklace I made them a little bit closer together and I'm much happier with it now I think it looks really nice and um, yeah I think I just honestly got too excited about finishing the necklace that I was no longer being intentional about my decision making which is a recipe for disaster with me always and I don't know why I didn't realize that sooner but nevertheless I have fixed it so <laughs> let's go look at the new and improved finished necklace Not gonna lie, didn't really expect it to come out as well as it did. I was doubting myself a little bit in the beginning when it came to just like actually making the necklace because I've never made a choker like this before. I'm not familiar with mostly just the closure in the back and just trying to figure out how to actually make the thing, but I'm so happy with it. It looks so good. I'm like honestly really surprised and very happy with how it looks. I'm, I'm really glad that I changed the beads. As much as I liked how it looked before, it was a lot more dainty and spread out. Like it was pretty, but it didn't really give spilled blood, which is the point. So I'm very happy that I changed the beads. It was very easy too. I just snipped the other ones off and restrung them and reattached. I think if I was going to change anything, I would probably just take a couple pearls, like literally just like one off of the first few strands because your neck isn't like this, it's like slanted. So the strands at the top want to like slump a little bit more. They're a little bit more loose and I guess I could probably replace them if I really wanted to, but I like it anyways. It looks fine. So yeah, I don't know. I'm so happy with this. I'm so glad that I finally did this. I've wanted to do this, like I said, for so long. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I hope maybe it gave you some insight. I sort of just winged it and figured out how to do it myself. So there's probably better ways to do pretty much everything that I did, but in the end it was a success and I'm very happy with it. So there's that. I think that's it though. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.